So, so far we have gone over in Module 1 how to solve linear equations and in Module 2 how to solve rational equations. In Module T 3, we're going to take a break from equations and talk about a concept. We're going to talk about an operation. And we're going to need this operation for Module 4 when we get back into solving. So we're going to learn something today that we're going to need to build on to solve some more equations. So Module 3 has to do with square roots. So let's go to the notes. If you remember, square roots are operations you do on numbers. So if I ask you the square root of 9, we know that is 3. Where did the 3 come from? It comes from the co concept that square root means a number times itself. What number times itself is 9? We know that's 3. If I ask you the square root of 1 25th, we know the answer is 1 5th. What times itself is 1? That's 1. What times itself is 25? It's 5. If I ask you negative square root of 100, the number in the square root symbol is 100. So what times itself is 100? That's 10. But that negative sign in front of it is a negative 1. And negative 1 times 10 is negative 10. So it's important to remember that square rooting is doing the operation of multiplication. And it's got to always be the same number being multiplied. So now, here's what's going to happen in college algebra. What does it mean when we write the square root of negative 36? Do you see how the negative symbol is inside the root? So I'm asking you, what number times itself is negative 36? Well, some of you are going to say 6, but think about that. What is 6 times 6? That's positive 36, so that can't be the answer. Some of you are going to say the answer is negative 6, but again, the definition of square root is a number times itself. So if you tell me the answer is negative 6, if you take negative 6 and multiply it to negative 6, you'll get out a positive, not a negative 36. So back in Algebra 2, Math 099, we said there was no answer to this. We said there's no real root. There is no number times itself that makes a negative. Well, mathematicians couldn't handle not having an answer. So mathematicians said, okay, let's think about this. If you call all the numbers on the number line real, and that's what we call them, then there's got to be an opposite to that. And the opposite of the word real is what we think about when we're little kids. Instead of having a real friend, you have an imaginary friend. So the opposite of the answer being a real number would be an imaginary number. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Believe it or not, in the real world, there are imaginary numbers. Now, we don't deal with them in real life. You're right, when we go shopping, when we deal with our bills, everything is real. Whether it's positive or negative, it's real. Even in sports, if you gain yardage or lose yardage, that's real. But if you were studying to be an electrical engineer, the math behind how the current flows in the wires is based on imaginary numbers. So there is a practical reason to learn about imaginary numbers. We're just going to learn about them in here to understand that when we solve equations, our answers don't have to be real, they have to be imaginary. So what I'm going to explain to you today is what an imaginary number is. Okay, so if we look at our notes, we start with a definition. A definition is something you can't prove, you take it as truth. So mathematicians started with the smallest negative number, they put negative 1. And they said, okay, I cannot square root the number negative 1. So that's not going to be real, that's going to be imaginary. And the symbol for imaginary is that little lowercase i with the squiggle at the end, like the little tail. It's just like pi. When I say pi in math, you all think about the symbol, but you know it stands for a number, 3.14. So that little i says the answer is not real, it says it's imaginary. So if you take the square root of negative 36, what that really means is you're doing the square root of 36 times the square root of negative 1. So we all know the square root of 36 is 6. And now we're learning the square root of negative 1 is not real, it's imaginary, so that's going to be replaced with i. So we would say the square root of negative 36 is 6i. And the symbol i means it's imaginary. Alright, so let's look at some examples. Let's go to the whiteboard. Alright. So I want to do the square root of negative 64. Now everybody pay attention. 
I know you all have calculators, but if you type that into your calculator, it gives you an error. It knows you can't square root it in your head. It knows there's no number times itself that makes a negative 64. Technically, this could be rewritten as saying, I want the square root of 64 times the square root of negative 1. That's what you're telling me. Now, we all know from arithmetic, what times itself is 64? That's 8. We're learning that you can never square root the number negative 1. That's imaginary. And that's represented with the symbol i. So we would say the square root of negative 64 is 8i. Now, do you need to show this work? No. We expect you to do it in your brain. We expect you to look at it here and say, the square root of 64 is 8. Because it's negative, it's imaginary. And why does the i go behind the 8? Because like any variable, it goes behind the number. So what is the square root of negative 121? Well, guys, I'm asking you the square root of 121 and the square root of negative 1. The square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of negative 1 is an imaginary. That's 11i. Now, you could do that in your head. The square root of 121 is 11. Up, oh, a square root of a negative number is not real. It's imaginary. You do it a fraction. This is asking you the square root of 4, the square root of 81, and then it's negative. So what's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of 81? 9. Because it's a negative, we know this answer is imaginary. And it's very important that the i stays to the side. Do not put it in the numerator. Definitely do not put it in the denominator. So the i stays to the side. And that just says the answer is make-believe. It's imaginary. Now we go to example 4. We have the square root of negative 12. And that's going to cause problems. If you type into the calculator exactly what you see, it gives you an error. Well, if you're smart and you say, all right, well, I'll just ask the calculator what's the square root of 12 because I don't know that, the calculator is going to spit out a decimal that doesn't end, that doesn't have a pattern. And we've talked about that in basic algebra. A decimal that fills up your whole calculator screen is called an irrational number. It's related to pi. A decimal that goes on forever and ever with no pattern is not acceptable. So what you have to recall, and this is going back to Algebra 2, is how to reduce or break down roots. This is really the square root of 12 times the square root of negative 1. I can't leave a square root of 12. There is a number in 12 that you could square root. So what you guys have to remember is the perfect square list. You're saying, what? Let's talk about this. You could square root 64 and get 8 because 64 is a perfect square. It's a number times itself. You could square root 121 and get 11 because 121 is a perfect square. It's a number times itself. Just like 4 and 81, they're perfect squares. They're numbers times themselves. So to break down a square root, you have to recall from algebra the perfect square list. And anybody in college algebra is expected to know the first 12 perfect squares by heart. They are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100, 121, 144. That's your first four, your 12 times tables. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4, etc. When you're breaking down a root, you want to find a perfect square that goes into this. And if you look at the list, 4 goes into 12. So we would write this as the square root of 4, the square root of 3, because that's what 12 is. It's 4 times 3. And we still have a square root of negative 1 here. What is the square root of 4, guys? That's 2. Now, can you square root 3? Well, if you remember from your arithmetic, 3 is not on this list. 3 cannot break down. It's not a number times itself, so it stays inside the symbol. And we just learned the square root of negative 1 is always i. Now, this is not acceptable because it's not written in the right form. All three of these terms are connected by multiplication. So, it's important that this is a whole number, then comes that variable i, and the last thing should be square root. So, that's read as 2i square root of 3. The square root of a negative number is always imaginary. And then square root of 12 is 2 times square root of 3. All right, let's try a next one.
all right? I have the square root of negative 63. So this is really 63 times negative 1. But 63 is not a perfect square. There is not the same number that multiplies to make 63. So what you have to do is reduce it. You have to go to your perfect square list and find a number in here that goes into 63. 9 does. So we're going to write 63 as 9 times 7. 63 is in a square root, so the 9 and the 7 are in a square root. We're going to leave the square root of negative 1. Now, what is the square root of 9? That's 3. It comes out. Can you square root 7? No, there is no same number that multiplies to 7, so it stays inside the symbol. And we learn the square root of negative 1 is i. Now, how do we write this correctly? 3i square root is 7. That's how we make an imaginary number. All right, we got one more here. We have square root of negative 13. So that means the square root of 13 times a negative square root of negative 1. 13 is not a perfect square. There is no same number that multiplies to 13. So we're going to look at this list. Do any of these numbers divide into 13? Well, 13 happens to be prime, which means it only divides by itself. So because 13 can't divide by 4, 9, 16, 25, we're not going to be able to reduce it. Now, I know you're saying, well, it divides by 1. You're right, but if you divide it by 1, does it change? No, it stays 13. So square root of 13 cannot be reduced. It stays. It's in lowest terms. What's the square root of negative 1? It's i. The i cannot stay behind the square root symbol. The i has always got to go in front of the square root symbol. So that's how we'd write the imaginary number, i square root of 13. So it's very important you guys understand, first of all, that if we're doing square roots and there's a negative sign in front, the answer is automatically going to be imaginary. So we're going to have an i. The second thing you have to understand is the i will never be inside the square root symbol. It always goes outside in front. And the third thing you got to realize is because we're dealing with square roots, if you have numbers in the square root symbol that are not perfect squares, you're going to have to break them down using the perfect square list. And we're going to see this come up a lot in the following sections. All right, catch you later.